Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. This is lesson number 21 and we are going to learn differentiation under the integral sign using Leibniz rule. And as always, the five most important points. Okay, so let's start. So, in the last video, we learned how to differentiate functions partially that is we learned partial differentiation or we learned the basics of partial differentiation and if you have not watched the video pause the video right now and watch lesson number 20 i'll repeat once more if you don't know partial differentiation or if you are not good at partial differentiation pause the video right now and watch lesson number 20 and then proceed with this video okay so first of all i will write um, the condition so look at this we have a function in x and alpha where x is the variable and alpha is the parameter basically a constant okay and the only condition is the partial derivative with respect to the parameter should exist the partial derivative uh, you remember curly d right yeah that should exist and it should be continuous then uh, you consider the integral a to b it's a definite integral from a to b f of x comma alpha and we are integrating with respect to x so you are allowed to differentiate this integral look at the title differentiation under the integral sign so we have the integral symbol but we are going to differentiate this whole thing we are going to differentiate the integral without touching the integral symbol and that is allowed so what i what i do is i am going to write the derivative with respect to alpha and this is the same as integral a to b so look at this um, this goes inside and when this goes inside it will change into the curly d the partial derivative and there will be no change in the variable of integration so basically this is Leibniz rule okay i'm sure you won't understand anything by just looking at the theory let's start with some problems and that will be very interesting okay and one good thing is we will be able to solve or integrate a lot of functions which we were not able to before so look at this uh, when we look at differentiation and integration um, we will always feel that differentiation is very easy yeah it's honest differentiation is very easy just because the differentiation has a very good system for example we have rules for product quotient function of a function uh, variable to the power variable implicit etc etc but you might have started learning integration from your high school or maybe from class 11 but even now you may not be able to integrate many functions and this is the condition of every math um, let it be a researcher or a teacher or anyone no one will be able to integrate all the functions but when you look at differentiation we will be able to differentiate most of the functions very easily so this technique uh, what you call enhances it gives us more power in integration once you learn this technique look at this we learned um, what you call properties of definite integral and afterwards you were able to solve a lot of problems a lot of new problems you were able to integrate a lot of problems and that means you become more powerful in the applications of integration in other subjects and then you learned improper integrals and that opened a whole new dimension see and now you're going to enhance more power in integration once you learn differentiation under the integral sign so please write one question 
that is integral 0 to 1 x to the power alpha minus 1 by log x dx. Okay. So, look at this. Uh, you have to understand a few things before we start. But first things first, let us give the integral the name. So, call it capital I. That means, if you find the value of I, you have solved the integral. So, our aim is finding the value of I. Okay. Now, we can see that the variable of integration is x and the parameter is alpha. I will repeat once more. The variable of integration is x. We can forget about this character for a moment. And the parameter is alpha. And when we perform Leibniz rule, when we perform Leibniz rule, alpha will be our hero. That is, when we differentiate, alpha will be the only variable because we are going to perform partial differentiation. Okay, so I am going to write applying Leibniz rule and differentiating both sides. You have to write this in exam. Applying Leibniz rule and differentiating both sides with respect to alpha. So, remember we are going to differentiate with respect to alpha. And Leibniz rule tells us if you want to differentiate with respect to the parameter, you should perform partial differentiation. Okay. So, I am going to write di by d alpha is equal to actually I am writing di by d alpha of the integral. But when this di by d alpha goes inside, it becomes the partial derivative. So, look at this. This is what happens. di by d alpha equal to integral 0 to 1, you have to perform partial differentiation. And remember, alpha is the only variable. Who is the only variable? Alpha. That means the denominator is a constant. And I am sure that you have met this function yesterday, um, uh, what do you call, when we learned partial differentiation, when we learned the derivatives, the basics of partial differentiation. So, you keep the denominator as such. And look at the numerator, we have constant to the power variable because alpha is the only variable and the derivative will be x power alpha log x minus 0. Okay, now one important thing, if you did not understand this step, that means you have to watch lesson number 20. Okay, now what happens is this and this will get cancelled. So, I got di by d alpha is equal to integral 0 to 1 x to the power alpha dx. Okay, now that's it. That's it. So, look at this. I told you the advantage of Leibniz rule is it will allow differentiation under the integral symbol. And the guarantee I am going to give you is once you perform this differentiation, once you perform this partial differentiation with respect to the parameter, you will be able to integrate. So, that is the guarantee I am giving you. Because most of the questions they ask in the exam will be designed like that. Once you perform this differentiation and simplify a little bit, you will be able to integrate. At least in the questions which they ask in your exams. Okay, now we are back to integration and I told you if you want to check the variable of integration, you can check it over here. So, the variable of integration is x. So, I am going to write one formula for you, x to the power n dx. So, the integral value is x to the power n plus 1, the whole divided by n plus 1 plus c. So, we get di by d alpha is equal to x to the power alpha plus 1 by alpha plus 1 because x is a variable and alpha is a constant when we perform integration. Um, and it is a definite integral so I had to put the values and this belong to x because the variable of integration is x. 
x varies from 0 to 1. I am writing very clearly x equal to 0 to 1 because I always see my students making one mistake. I am sure some of you already made that. Some students substitute for alpha. I really don't know why that happens. So it's better to make clear x varies from 0 to 1. So we end up with di by d alpha equal to look. What I promised is you will be able to integrate. Yeah, we are able to integrate. Now plug in the upper limit and lower limit for x. So we get 1 to the power alpha plus 1. 1 to the power any finite number is 1. So we get 1 by alpha plus 1. Minus when we plug in 0, you are going to get 0 by alpha plus 1. That is 0 and that is it. So I kept my promise. After differentiation, you are able to integrate and we got, I am going to write that very clearly, di by d alpha equal to 1 by alpha plus 1. Oh no, now I have to draw the sad face again. What are you trying to find? Do you even remember what are trying to find? We are trying to find the value of i we are trying to find i and what did we find we found di by d alpha okay no worries let's change this into happy face because you already learned variables separable in integration i mean in differential equation so all you have to do is make it variable separable and once more look at the happy face and integrate because integral di will give you i and integral 1 by x dx is log x to be honest you have to write ln x but most of our books are following log x in the assumption the base is e anyway uh, let's not deviate too much from our books so let's write uh, log alpha plus 1 plus the constant of integration. So look at this. We are trying to find the value of i and finally, finally we found the value of i. Okay, so let me write that i is equal to log alpha plus 1 plus c and I am going to call it equation number 1. Um, no, no, it's not time to be happy. Again, I have to draw a big sad face. What is i? It's a definite integral. A definite integral can never have plus c. How can we have plus c? So this is really bad. Okay, uh, I have an idea. Uh, do you remember when you derive things in physics, in mechanics, in electronics, in applied subject, you do one trick. Whenever you have a situation like this, whenever you apply integration and whenever you get plus c, your teachers will apply some conditions. For example, if you are doing some time related problem, time velocity related problem, your teachers might uh, put one condition. When time equal to zero, the displacement equal to zero. When time equal to zero, the displacement uh, sorry, the velocity equal to 0, you put some conditions and find the value of the constant. If you are doing some heat related problem, you might apply the condition when time equal to 0, the room temperature is the temperature. So that is exactly what we are planning to do to find the value of C. In your exam, you should write this, but please make sure you write it inside a box. So, next what you do is, you bring the question. Uh, the question is, i is equal to 0 to 1, x power alpha minus 1 by log x dx. I will show you that so that we can confirm. Yeah, x to the power alpha minus 1 by log x dx. Now, look at this. We are differentiating with respect to alpha initially, right? Okay. So, now you tell me. You tell me, put alpha equal to dash so that 
i will be equal to 0 so you tell me a value for alpha you give me a value for alpha so that the integral will vanish come on tell me guess make a guess we need an initial condition um, okay it sounds like if i put alpha equal to 0 yeah we get x power 0 x power 0 is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 okay the numerator is 0 that's enough see now we have a condition so i am going to write therefore by equation 1 0 is equal to look i'm going to put that special special value log of 0 plus 1 plus c that's it i know log 1 is 0 therefore c is equal to 0 finally time to draw the happy face that's it so now you plug in this value of c over here and we found i so you can write therefore by equation one uh, oh i forgot to close the box i'll repeat once more in an exam this will be in the main step but uh, put a separator and make your presentation good okay so we get i is equal to log of alpha plus one plus zero because the value of c is zero in this problem that is log alpha plus 1. That is, once more I will write, what is our i? Integral 0 to 1, x to the power alpha minus 1 by log x, dx is equal to log of alpha plus 1. So, I hope you understood the method. Now, let's make the method more strong. And let's do one problem which is very similar to the first one. And this time, let's go a little bit fast. So, shall we start? Yes. So, look at this. Evaluate the integral. Integral x to the power a minus x to the power b. The whole divided by log x dx. So, first things first. Oh, it's already done. I already called it i. In case they don't give you uh, the name i, make sure you put i. And the limits are given to be 0 to 1. So, we are called the given integral to be i or it will be mentioned in the question. Now, look at this. I am going to mention the variable uh, because by looking at this dx, I understand the variable is x. And the parameters are a and b. Okay. So, what did I promise? The promise is, the guarantee is, if you differentiate with respect to the parameter using Lebanese rule and simplify a little bit you will be able to perform the integration with respect to x so that is exactly what we are going to do but i am a bit confused should i differentiate with respect to a or should i differentiate with respect to b it's the same thing you're going to get the same thing at the last but for the time being i'm going to it's a, it's kind of like a symmetric function so, I am going to differentiate with respect to a and when you work out this problem along with me, I will also recommend please work out the problem uh, along with me by differentiating with respect to a and later on you can try it with respect to b and check whether you are getting the same answer. You can comment below. Okay. So, I am going to write applying Lebanese rule and differentiating both sides with respect to the parameter a. This is very important. Make sure you write this in the exam. So, I am going to perform di by dA. But, I told you, you are going to do d by dA, d by dA on both sides. But, when this derivative goes inside, it becomes partial derivative. And whenever you do that partial derivative, the first thing to check is, who will be the only variable? Okay. And who will be the only variable? Yeah, a. So, we get integral 0 to 1. a is the only variable. So, the denominator is a constant and I keep the constant as such. And I can see constant to the power variable. Look, a is the only variable. Everything else are constants. So, we end up with x power a log x. 
minus 0 because this is a constant, this is a constant and I am sure you learned this in the last lesson. Okay, here we go. So, we simplify and I get integral 0 to 1 x power a dx. Okay, so what did I guarantee? Once you perform Leibniz rule and differentiate with respect to the parameter and simplify a little bit, you will be able to perform integration. Anyway, I am going to write the formula x to the power n dx. That means x is the variable of integration and we have variable to the power constant. The formula is x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 plus c. And I love to specify the variable here. Uh, this limit belongs to x because the variable of integration is x. So here we go. We integrate. Finally, we integrate x power a plus 1, the whole divided by a plus 1 within the limits x equal to 0 to 1. Now plug in the upper value and the lower value for x and we will get, I will write it here itself, di by da is equal to 1 to the power a plus 1 is 1 by a plus 1 and the next term will be 0. So I guaranteed something and I kept my promise. So, I will write it very clearly here. di by da is equal to 1 by a plus 1. But wait a minute. What are we trying to find? At this point, you should question yourself. What are we trying to find? We are trying to find the value of i. Because value of i is the given integral. Okay. But what did you find? di by da. Should I draw a sad face? No, no. Because you have learned variable separable method. So you just change this into a variable separable problem and make it di is equal to 1 by a plus 1 da. And go ahead, integrate. So we get i is equal to log. To be honest, I should be writing here ln natural logarithm anyway let's follow our books and call it equation number one but don't be too happy uh, let's keep our smile like this not too happy why aren't you happy because the given integral is a definite integral and definite integral will never have plus arbitrary constant so that means we still have to find the value of c. But that is very easy. Draw the box and write the question. The question was integral 0 to 1 x power a minus x power b the whole divided by log x dx. I will show you that in a minute. See? i is equal to 0 to 1 x power a minus x power b the whole divided by log x dx. And by the way, you differentiated with respect to a. By the way, you differentiated with respect to a. Yeah. So, you have to write like this. Put a is equal to something dash. I will get i equal to 0. So, tell me please. What should I write instead of a? Very simple, b. That means if I replace a with the letter b, the numerator will vanish. And if the numerator will vanish, of course, the whole integral will become 0. Um, now, I am going to plug in this value. Therefore, by 1, where is my equation 1? Where is it? Yeah, here. So, this i becomes 0 is equal to log of what should I write instead of a? Yeah. b plus 1 plus c. Therefore, c is equal to minus log b plus 1. So finally, I found the value of c. You can close the box. I'm not that good in drawing. You can draw it neatly in your exam. Now, I'll plug in this value. I'm going to plug in this value of c 
in equation one yeah now we can smile finally we can smile so what's my answer you can write by equation one i is equal to log a plus one yeah i put the value of c that will be plus and minus minus log b plus one what is log a minus log b yeah that is log a plus 1 by b plus 1 so I hope you understood the method clearly uh, so I'm going to wind up this video right now I'll be back with more problems more important problems so if you like the video please share and subscribe so I'll be back soon so till then my friends bye